focus in this morning and learn all about sharks. So I hope you're ready and willing to learn a little bit more about sharks today as we explore around the aquarium and answer some of your questions. So this will be your opportunity to text us. Now, kids, make sure you get your permission from your parents as text messaging rates uh, may apply. Uh, but go ahead and you can text the number that you see on the bottom of your screen, 562 786 5181. So if you have questions you'd like to ask, go ahead and text us and I'll see if I can get to those at some point during our program today as we're learning about sharks. So let's go ahead and get started. Now sharks of course are a type of fish. Now if you look at a shark and you think about it being a fish and you think about what comes to your mind when you think about fish, uh, what are some similarities that you see between sharks and other fish? Maybe we can get a picture up or maybe we can even look at one of our webcams. We'll get started right away and looking at oh some video right here. Now of course this is a fish. Now this is actually a really exciting fish here in in um, Southern California because that is the state marine fish of California, the Garibaldi. But as you looked at him, what did you notice? And if you compare it to this animal right here, what things are, this similar, are the same, what things are similar, and what things are different? Now, being the fact that they're fish, we know that they have to breathe underwater somehow. And they don't use lungs like we do. Instead, they use, what is it? Gills, that's right. So here you can see the gills on our shark. And notice that they have these long lines here. One, two, three, four, oops, one, two, three, four, five of them right there. They have five gill slits on each side of their head to help them breathe. Whereas other fish that aren't sharks have a covering like you may have seen on our Garibaldi. Let's look again. He's got this covering. It kind of looks like this like U shape, kind of like a backwards C. And that's a covering that goes over and protects their gills on the inside. But they both have gills that they use to breathe. The Garibaldi brings the water in through their mouth and out their gills so that they can breathe. And then sharks can sometimes keep swimming through the water as it goes over their gills to breathe. But did you know that not all sharks need to keep swimming in order to breathe? Some can actually sit on the bottom of the ocean and breathe just fine. In fact, this is an example of one of those sharks right here. It's called a zebra shark. Now, I realize it doesn't look very much like a zebra at all, does it? No, we think of zebras as having black and white stripes, but this one has spots. Now, the spots that you see right here, kind of, if you look carefully, they kind of are going along a line. And that's because when the zebra shark is born, it does actually have black and white stripes that resemble the stripes of a zebra. And then as it matures, those stripes fade away, they turn into spots. But the zebra shark is sometimes seen just sitting on the bottom of the ocean. But if you were to look carefully at any of our sharks in our shark cam, um, in our uh, shark lagoon or our tropical Pacific exhibit, uh, you would notice them still being able to pump water across their gills on their own. Okay, so we have some questions that have been coming in. What is a shark's favorite food? Now, it kind of depends on the shark because one thing we've learned here at the aquarium is that the sharks are kind of picky eaters. And some sharks like certain foods or like it to be given to them certain ways and other sharks don't. Uh, but the foods that we commonly feed our sharks are squid, that's one thing. Uh, that slippery, slimy stuff. And then we also give them various types of fish. So fish is the main food source for most animals uh, or for most of the sharks. Now it depends on the size of the shark and the size of their teeth to help them decide what type of fish they're going to eat. Uh, so some like large fish, some like really small fish. In fact, some would only eat shrimp. Uh, so we'll learn a little bit more and look at some shark teeth in just a little bit and uh, understand how they how they decide what they like to eat. Um, we were also asked, can sharks swim backwards? That's a great question. Um, maybe we'll look and see if we can find any sharks. We'll watch them swimming and see what kinds of observations we can make. Uh, but that's a really good question. We'll see if we can um, observe a few things uh, th throughout our time here. Oh, here's actually a live feed right now from our shark lagoon here at the aquarium. I mean, you can see that's a gray reef shark that just swam by the front. And in the back, you can see a black tip reef shark. The way you can tell the difference is looking for the black tips on the fins of the sharks. If you see black tips on their fins, that is a black tip reef shark. Uh, if you don't see any of those, like right here, this one right here, that's a gray reef shark. But notice this is a coral reef habitat. Uh, so this is a warm water exhibit where we have these sharks swimming at Shark Lagoon. There's also some tropical fish swimming in there. But let's see, 
Do you notice any that aren't swimming or that are swimming backwards? Let's see. Right now, it looks like all of them, I'm trying to stay off the screen so I'm not blocking your view, um, but it looks like all of them right now are swimming. There's something on the ground down here I can't see very well. That could be one of our stingrays or it could be even the tail of a zebra shark. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, uh, but for the most part, they are not really swimming backwards that I see. It would be very difficult for a shark to move himself backwards. He doesn't have really good backup um, propellers to keep him going because if you notice as the sharks swim, they're swimming forward. And what are they using to go forward? They're using their back fin. That back fin, I'm going to have my shark model, my puppet here, help me out. They are using this going back and forth. So this pushes them forward, but there's no way to really put this in reverse so that they can go this way. You'll notice they're not really using these fins here on the side, these pectoral fins. Those are pretty much kept out to the side to be more like the wings of an airplane to help give them lift as they swim through the water. All right, so Joanna asked, what is my favorite shark? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know. I think I really like zebra sharks. Uh, the zebra sharks that we were talking about earlier are so sweet and so kind that we even have animal encounters, our VIP animal encounters, where people get into the water and get to be in the water with our sharks. Um, and those are the ones that we usually use for our animal encounters. So they're very sweet and they have a really, really rough and bumpy skin, which hmm, maybe we should get into that. Uh, do you know what's on the outside of a shark's body compared to other fish? Like if you look at this fish right about at my hand right here, you'll notice they look kind of smooth, but you probably know that, sh that uh, fish have bodies that are covered with scales. Makes them kind of smooth, but sharks instead have something all over their bodies called dermal denticles. And here's a close-up view of them. Look at how bumpy they look. And the reason they're called dermal denticles is because think about the word dermal. If you think about a dermatologist or your epidermis, that's your skin. That's the outside covering of you. And so the outside covering of a shark has denticles. Now, if you think of the word denticles, denti, denti, what does that make you think of? Ah, the dentist maybe? So the dentist is someone who takes care of your teeth. So dermal denticles mean skin teeth. So that's basically what these animals have all over their bodies, skin teeth, very different from the other fish that have scales. Okay, so if I'd like to, let's see, let's see, um, how can sharks be? Oh, that's a great question. There's another question, how old can sharks get? Well, the oldest shark that we are aware of is what's called the Greenland shark, and they have been known to get over 270 years old. Can you believe that? That's a really long time. And so Haley wanted to know um, what the oldest shark is and what kind of sharks live the longest. And so those are the ones that we know of are the Greenland sharks. I don't know if we have any news of other sharks that live nearly as long as the Greenland shark, uh, but that's kind of a special discovery. Um, and it's been relatively new. So we think other sharks probably live up to 80 years or so, something like that. Okay, so let's see. Um, I think I've, oh, how many rows of teeth? do sharks have? That actually depends a little bit on the shark. Um, and you know what? I'd really like to get to that. I'd love to show you some shark teeth. However, we probably need to check in. Should we check in to see if we can get anyone on the line? Because I know that we have a friend who would love to help us explore a little bit today and learn more about sharks. So I'm wondering if maybe we can pull up my friend Sharky and he might be able to help us introduce some of these topics a little bit more. So hi everyone. <laughs> Hi, Sharky. My name is Sharky. I work here at the aquarium. Today, I was going to go on an adventure to see if I can learn more about sharks. Hey, would you like to join me on my adventure? You guys want to join us? Sure, we'll join you, Sharky. All right, well, great. Sharks All right, have been around so for over 400 million years. That is way back, even before dinosaurs were around. Over time, Sharks have become one of the most popular hunters in the ocean. Sharks come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. Some are shaped like footballs, while others are as flat as a pancake. Some sharks are as small as your hand, and others are as big as a bus. Dr. Ramora, 
Do you have anything in your classroom to show the students just how large and small these sharks can actually be? Actually, I can use the students to help Great. you Great! While you teach the kids about sizes, I'm going to swim off to Shark Lagoon. Meet me there later. All right. Bye, Sharky. All right, so I don't have anything. Normally, we'd be teaching this class in a classroom. And sometimes we have things we can use, but I'm right now in a very small studio. So I'm going to talk to you guys and ask you to help me at home. Uh, so talking about shark sizes, Sharky mentioned that some could be as small as your hand, and some can be as big as a bus. Now, that's a big range. So let's learn a little bit more about the sharks and these sizes in between. So first of all, one of the sharks, this one right here called the bamboo shark that we have in our shark lagoon where we actually let our guests touch them and you can pet the bamboo sharks at shark lagoon. Um, to learn how long bamboo sharks are, any guesses? Hmm. If you're in a room and you have someone else nearby, go ahead and tell them how big you think a bamboo shark can be. Or maybe you can show them with your hands. In fact, I'm going to have you help me out. So if you take your hands and you kind of put them like a V kind of above your head and then put them out next to each other, that's about three and a half feet long. That's how big a bamboo shark is. That's not a very big shark. In fact, if you were to measure that length and then stand up next to it, you're going to find that you are probably bigger than a bamboo shark. And that size is a really important size because 50% or half of the sharks in the ocean will never get bigger than three and a half feet. So you are already larger than half of the sharks swimming in the ocean. But of course, sharks get bigger than three and a half feet. So let's look at another shark and see how big it can get. Let's take a look at the black tip reef shark that we saw swimming around in Shark Lagoon. And I realize that when you're looking through a camera, it's hard to tell exactly how big those things are unless they're swimming right in front of the camera. So if you take that V that you had and you were to move over one space like this, that's about, oh, well, if you shorten a little bit, about six feet, six and a half, seven feet. Or if you think about if you have a sibling at home, someone that you can be close enough to, um, you could actually have them stand right next to you. And so if the two of you stand next to each other and you measure from this hand to this hand, that's about six feet. And that's how big this black tip reef shark is. But of course, some sharks get bigger than that too. So let's see how big this next shark is. Mmm, the sand tiger shark. This is also one of my favorite sharks we have at the aquarium. The sand tiger shark can grow to be about the size of, let's see, what's a good way to say this? Well, look in your room. If you're in a living room at home, if you have maybe a large couch, do you have a cart couch? L large couch, maybe about 10 feet long. That's how big the sand tiger shark is. So that's a little bit bigger than me. Uh, but when the sand tiger shark swims by, notice how his mouth is open just a little bit. You can actually see some of his teeth actually kind of sticking out when he swims by and smiles for you. And we'll take a look at what his teeth look like in just a little bit. Um, but of course, 10 feet's pretty big, but some sharks even get bigger than that. Not very many, but some do. In fact, what about this shark right here? Do you know what shark this is? Go ahead and shout it out if you know it. Tell someone in the room. Yeah, it's the great white shark, and they have this white underside to the belly, and they are pretty big. In fact, they can grow to be about 22 feet long, and that's hard for me to show here in the studio, uh, but if you look around your room, maybe even about the size of a wall, look at the long, longest room or the longest wall in the room uh, that you're in right now, that might even not be big enough but about 20 feet long. So if there's an adult in the room with you, you can ask them and they can give you an approximate size of how big 20 feet or 22 feet is. But the great white shark is not the biggest shark. Do you know what the biggest shark is? Go ahead and shout it out if you know it. I think I heard some of you saying it. It is the whale shark. So this is the whale shark and look at how cool it is. It's got these cool polka dot spots all over him. And then look at how different his mouth looks compared to the sand tiger shark that we were looking at. So instead of having a pointy mouth like the sand tiger shark, he's got this very wide mouth, which is great for helping him eat plankton. So even though the whale shark, which can be 60 feet long, is actually, this is a pretty big shark. They actually eat the smallest type of food of all the sharks. Now there's another shark that's also very, very large.
that sometimes people confuse with whale sharks because of its size. And it has big gill slits that you can see on the side of its mouth. There you go. This right here is called a basking shark. And again, the basking shark is very, very large, but doesn't get quite as large as the whale shark. Uh, but again, they just eat little teeny tiny things. So they go through the water with their mouth open, filtering out little tiny plankton from the water. All right. Now, someone also asked, do sharks swim solo or in pairs? Um, or in pods, I'm sorry. And it actually depends. A lot of times sharks are solitary, um, but occasionally they'll get together in big groups and you might find a number of sharks all swimming together. But for the most part, they tend to swim on their own. Sometimes there are big migrations that happen too. Um, and with their cousins, the stingrays, uh, sometimes you see stingrays even coming out of the water a little bit, which is kind of fun. Uh, but they can be in groups, but most of the time uh, they're kind of individuals. Now, Brian said, can you touch the sharks at the aquarium? And the answer to that is yes. We have a number of sharks that you can pet and touch. Um, so here we have Shark Lagoon, and these are the bamboo sharks. We have brown banded and white spotted bamboo sharks, as well as some epaulette sharks. Uh, I can't see in this one, but they're about the same size. And you can touch these gently with two fingers. Uh, we also have some sharks at Shark Lagoon in our large uh, in our large pool that we're not going to let you touch, uh, but you can definitely come to the aquarium and touch some sharks. So hopefully you'll get a chance to do that one of these days. We would love to see you here at the aquarium when we're open. Um, now Ruby said, can sharks see in color? The answer to that is yes, actually they can. Uh, people used to believe that sharks don't have very good vision, uh, but we have found that actually they have decent vision. They can see about 70 feet away and they can actually see color. So good question. Now, Madison asks, why do sharks have to keep moving? Now, that's actually an interesting question because not all sharks need to keep moving all the time. There are some species that do, like the great white shark um, that has to constantly swim to push water across his gills so he can breathe. But there are a number of sharks that can sit on the bottom and, and pump water across their gills all on their own, like the leopard shark and the zebra shark and even the bamboo sharks we were just looking at. And then also, are there any endangered species of sharks? And yes, there are a number of endangered sharks. Um, we actually have some here at the aquarium and in different populations, um, different areas of the world, they're more threatened than others even. Uh, so our sand tiger shark is one that we are trying to learn more about while we have them here and learn more about their reproduction uh, so that we can actually help these animals um, in other places and help them to even grow their populations out in the ocean. Uh, so the biggest threat right now to sharks though is actually people. Uh, we kill a lot of sharks, unfortunately. Uh, so we are their biggest threat because there's not too many other animals in the ocean that pick on sharks. Uh, but these sharks play an important role in the marine ecosystem because they help keep the oceans healthy. They help get rid of the sick and injured fish so that we're not spreading sickness throughout the ocean. And that's really important. So nature has a way of creating a nice clean environment for them as long as we're not getting in the way and messing things up a little bit. Um, okay, Evie also said, are shark eggs really called mermaids' purses? Oh, that's a great question. And yes, the answer to that is yes, they are sometimes called mermaids' purses. And I'm wondering if we have a picture that my friend James in the studio might be able to find for us. I don't know if we do, uh, but we'll see if we can show you what a shark egg looks like. And you can decide if you think it's something a mermaid might want to carry around as a purse. Um, here we go. Here's a shark egg right here. So here, what's really neat is you can see the shark, whoa, growing right inside. You see that outline of that shark? That's the little shark egg or the little shark baby inside the egg. And then all these little strings, these filaments here are really sticky. And so when the mama shark lays her eggs, she'll actually swim in a circle around something like a rock. And those filaments that are all sticky will come out first. And then she will put them, it'll stick to that rock. So then when she lays her egg and the egg comes out, which looks like this, um, it doesn't just float all over the ocean and float away. It has a nice secure place where it's blending in. Notice the camouflage. So the color here looks very different than the typical chicken egg. When we're thinking about eating eggs in the morning, um, it looks very different than that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we, when we look at chicken eggs, we have to be really careful or when we're making chicken eggs because they'll crack open really easily. Well, an egg like that in the ocean is not going to hold up very well with all that water moving back and forth and the waves and the rocks and all those things. And so that shark egg is kind of leathery. It's not as thin as a chicken egg. And it's also that dark color to help it camouflage. And so once the baby shark matures and it eats up all the yolk that's inside of that um, egg, 
then it can swim out the end and off it goes to be a shark as it grows. All right, Ava said, are any of the sharks aggressive? And there's actually very few aggressive sharks. Um, and I would say for the most part, sharks are, they keep their distance from people. Much more, um, they try to avoid us probably more than we even tried to avoid them. A lot of people like to go swimming in the water and they look for places where there are sharks so they can swim with the sharks. There are a number of people here at the aquarium who've been swimming with sharks. I've been lucky enough to go swimming with leopard sharks um, right off our coast here, um, off of Catalina Island, which is really exciting. Uh, but Jade says, or Jude says, what is your favorite shark defense? Oh, I'm so glad you asked uh, because sharks have this really cool way of finding their food. Now, sharks have the same five senses we have. They can see, they can smell, they can hear, they can taste, and they can touch. Is that all of them? See, smell, touch. Oh, and they can hear. Did I say that one? Um, but they can also have an extra sense that you and I don't have. They can sense electricity. And the way that they sense electricity is right up by the front of the shark around their nose area and their mouth area. Let's see. It's kind of cool that this one's coming up really close, but right around there, if you see anything that looks like little freckles, those are something called, are you ready for this? It's a weird, crazy sounding name. It's called ampullae of Lorenzini. Now, ampullae of Lorenzini are little pores that allow them to sense electricity in the water because every living thing, every time your muscles are contracting, your heart is beating, it gives off an electric charge that a, a shark would be able to sense, but it has to be within four inches of the shark. So the shark has to be really, really close to their prey before they can sense that electricity coming from that prey's uh, body. So I think that's one of the coolest defenses uh, that a shark has, or I should say one of their coolest senses, maybe not defenses. I think their coolest defense is probably their uh, shark skin that they have, their dermal denticles, those shark teeth all over their body. Um, someone asked what the most dangerous shark is. And I believe the shark that probably has been um, in the news the most is probably the bull shark because those have been areas that um, will sometimes feed into freshwater areas. So freshwater and um, saltwater areas in certain areas of the country. We don't really see them around here. They're much more uh, warm water sharks. Um, but I would say that might be one of the top ones. People th think about great white sharks too. Um, so. I don't know how you want to define that, but I'd say the great white shark and the uh, bull shark are maybe what some people would consider more dangerous because um, they're in more areas where people are. Um, what's on the ridges of a shark's tooth? Oh, okay. Let's take a closer look. I think now is a good time to uh, real quickly check in with Sharky and see if he's found um, anyone at Shark Lagoon. Hello, everyone. Look who I ran into. This here is Steve Blair. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm an aquarist at the aquarium. In Aqua Delua Halle who? An aquarist. That means I take care of the animals. I'm in charge of feeding them, treating them for diseases, and watching the exhibits. Today I'm feeding Shark Lagoon. Wow, what a great job. It looks like there are a lot of mouths to feed here, Steve. Just how many sharks are there? There's about 150 bamboo sharks in the large touch pool to Shark Lagoon. 150? What do all the sharks like to eat? Well, sharks are hunters. Today I'm feeding them squid. Squid? Ew, gross. Do all sharks eat the same kind of food? No, you should know that, Sharky. Sharks have different kinds of teeth to eat different kinds of food. Wow, that sure is a lot of different teeth, Steve. Well, hey guys, I know that sometimes our divers get into the water with the sharks. I wonder what it's like to swim with them. That is a great question, Dr. Remora. I will go ask them. Meet me up in the dive locker. Bye, Steve. Bye-bye. Right. Bye, guys. All right. So we are going to see if we can learn a little bit more about the divers and how they interact with our sharks here at the aquarium. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look. Since some questions have been coming up about shark teeth, let's take a look at some shark teeth. Um, but real quickly before... Or, well, actually, let me show you the shark teeth first, and then maybe we'll show you some clips of what it looks like when those sharks are eating. So first of all... One of the sharks that we've been talking about a lot today is this one. This is from the zebra shark. Now look at this. This is a jaw. Look at how big it is in comparison with my hand. Now this shark actually grows to be bigger than me. So this is not a small shark just because they have small tiny teeth. Can you even see those teeth? These little tiny things right here. It's like a little, let's see, maybe try 
get a little bit closer. Do you see all those little tiny things right here? Those are all teeth. So these are the teeth of a zebra shark, which are really, really small for eating small fish and shrimp and small animals in the ocean. But that's very different from, whoa, I have to zoom out on this one, than this shark jaw. Now this is maybe what you were picturing when you thought of a shark jaw in your head and you thought about the teeth that they have. Um, this is a little bit harder to zoom in on, but let me see if I can get it so you can see. Look at how long and skinny and pointed these teeth are. And do you notice how they tend to have rows? So someone was asking how many rows of teeth a shark has, and you'll notice it varies from shark to shark. So this one right here, this is a model of a mako shark. And this one is really only showing me two rows. So these down here are teeth that would be growing in before the shark, um, or before they actually come out of the gum of the shark. So these would still be kind of on the inside and they might only have like two teeth that are showing out of the end. Now this one might have been able to show you three teeth um, because sharks or scientists believe that possibly every time a shark eats, they could lose a tooth. So they'd be constantly losing and regrowing their teeth. Now look at the zebra shark again, and you can see they have rows and rows of teeth. I don't even know how many rows there are, maybe 20 or so. So it varies from shark to shark. But again, looking at the uh, mako shark, and these are very similar to the teeth of the sand tiger shark that we were looking at earlier too. So the sand tiger shark has long pointy teeth, and these teeth are great for helping them hold on to slippery slimy fish and squid that they can grab whole and then swallow whole. Or they grab these teeth, they use their teeth to grab their food and then swallow whole. They do not chew their food at all. In fact, maybe we can even find um, in just a minute, we'll find you a picture of what it looks like when these animals are eating. Now here are the edges of a different type of tooth from a different kind of shark. This is from, let's see if I can focus it, there we go. This is from a great white shark. So the great white shark has edges called serrated edges along the edge of their teeth that helps them to tear into things that are too big for them to fit into their mouth in one big bite. So these are animals that could eat something like a seal or a sea lion, something big and blubbery. Um, whereas the mako shark or the sand tiger shark, those long pointy teeth, they would break off if they tried to eat a really large animal like that. So um, let's go ahead and see if we can find some pictures of those sharks eating. So here's that zebra shark. And when they feed, they actually can be fed from the surface of the water. Oh, here comes one going up to the surface um, by our aquarium staff that are feeding them. And those are the ones with those little teeny tiny teeth. Then of course there's the sand tiger shark. Watch him eat that. Watch him eat this again. See how he just grabs it and then he swallows it whole. He doesn't even chew his food. That's so rude. And then there's the great white shark and those serrated edges on those teeth. All right, so once again, just to show you in comparison was I'm holding the shark jaws, oops. This right here is the mako shark or the sand tiger shark teeth. This right here is the mouth of the zebra shark. And this is one tooth of a great white shark. Now, right here, I've got another special model of a shark jaw. Any guess as to what one this one is? What shark was really big? What was our biggest shark, do you remember? Uh-huh, it is the whale shark. And their teeth, are so tiny, you can barely even see them. They're like these little teeny tiny bumps, kind of like the zebra sharks, but even smaller. And there's not very many of them. There's not a big space for them to grow. Now, I did mention that sharks can lose a lot of teeth. Do you have any idea how many teeth a shark can lose in its lifetime? Well, this right here, this is my model. It's showing me um, all those, well, this one has two rows of teeth, but a shark could potentially lose up to 30 thousand teeth in their lifetime. Imagine all the money they could get from the shark tooth fairy. I don't know if the tooth fairy goes in the ocean, but that would be a lot of money. 30,000 teeth. So again, every time they eat, they could potentially lose a tooth. All right, so we've got some more questions. Um, Olive wants to know, can sharks smell? And yes, they have a great sense of smell. 
Um, that is not their strongest sense. Their sense of hearing is actually their strongest sense. Um, but yes, they do have a very good sense of smell. Um, they could sense one little drop of food, um, oil from some food and water in like a million drops of water, one out of a million. Uh, so they have a really good sense of smell. Marcos wants to know, can you swim with the sharks at the aquarium? Well, we don't offer any programs where you can swim in the water with the sharks, uh, but we do have animal encounters where you can actually help feed the sharks and you can pet the sharks. Um, we also have the VIP encounters where you can get in the water with the sharks, but you're in waist high uh, water, but you have to be a little bit older for that one. Um, but you, we do give people the opportunity to interact with our sharks with different programs, uh, but you're always welcome to come and pet the sharks uh, here at Shark Lagoon. Um, also, how much do sharks eat a day? Believe it or not, not very much. Uh, they can go actually several days without eating. We do offer our sharks food every single day here at the aquarium, but that's way more than they really need to get. Um, they might go 10 days without eating. Uh, so they generally eat maybe up to like a half percent to 3% of their body weight a day. So if you figure a 100 pound shark, uh, you're looking at maybe three pounds of food a day. So that's not really a whole lot for a shark. Um, what is the rarest species of shark? Um, oh, we have a newly named shark. It's called a pocket shark. It's about five and a half inches. And they were found many years ago, but only named last year. So it's kind of new news in this shark world. Uh, so the pocket shark, which makes sense because you can put your hands right in your pocket. You could stick a shark in your pocket. Well, maybe not, not a good idea. Be really wet and messy. Um, okay, so Pepper wants to know how long does it take for a shark egg to hatch? Well, it actually depends on the shark species, but I know here at the aquarium, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm thinking it's somewhere in the range of three to six months. Is that about typical? Um, so about three to six months, I know with our bamboo sharks. Um, someone also wants to know, do sharks eat jellies? And um, believe it or not, some sharks do. I don't know which ones, uh, but there are some sharks that do actually prey on jellies. Isn't that strange? Um, and then what's the biggest shark at the aquarium? Our biggest one here is our sand tiger shark, um, our big guy. And he right now is at our Molina Animal Care Center in a special, special pool over there while we are letting these sharks at Shark Lagoon, some of our newer ones, adjust to some new surroundings here. And uh, so he's in a different area, but right next to Shark Lagoon, you can see our sand tiger shark. All right, well, Let's see if we had a chance. Do we have a chance to answer any more questions? I know um, we're probably about up, but maybe we can just real quickly, should we try to check in with Sharky one more time, see if he found a diver or actually, should we just go give him one last chance? Cause I don't think we looked at um, our tropical reef habitat yet. Maybe we can do that. So let's look and see. One thing we didn't do is look for, um, I don't know if anyone noticed our bonnet head sharks. That's a shark we didn't get a chance to talk about today. And I would love to show you guys. Hi everybody, oh, there's I found a Hi. diver. Hi Sharky, I'm Scuba Sally and I'm one of the divers here at the aquarium. Scuba Sally, do you get to feed the sharks? Sure, I feed lots of fish here, including sharks. Now, some of the sharks are fed using poles from the surface like this. And some of the sharks are fed by hand. By hand? Aren't you afraid that the sharks are going to eat you? No, sharks don't like to eat people. They like to eat things like fish and blubbery seals and sea lions. Well, that sure is good to know. I am sure that the kids are relieved to know that sharks don't eat people. Thank you, Scuba Sally. Well, kids, I have to make my way back to the ocean, but if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Amora has a special treat before you go. Thank you for joining me on my adventure. I hope you had fun and learned a lot of new and interesting facts about sharks. See you around. All right, bye Sharky, thank you. Now, again, I don't think that's any surprise to you. We all know that sharks have very different types of teeth based on the types of food that they eat. So sharks eat lots of different types of fish and other animals in the ocean. Uh, but this is a special treat. I wanted to give you a chance to see our uh, bonnet head sharks right here. So these sharks right here, notice they have that big, long head. They are a type of hammerhead shark. Um, and there's our zebra shark, uh, one of our zebra sharks with their ridges on their back and their big, long tail. Um, so anyway, I wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to see those sharks. And there are a couple other questions we have a chance to answer. Um, what sharks live in the deepest part of the ocean? Um, actually, well, the Greenland shark, I think, believes in 
lives in pretty deep water. Um, also, I think there are some hammerhead sharks that live in pretty deep water as well. But uh, the frilled shark is another really cool looking shark that has these gills that kind of stick out on the side of its head. Uh, so there are some sharks that live in pretty deep water. And then I think we might have another question coming through, but I wanted to point out also this animal down here, this stingray. Now, the stingray I mentioned earlier, is a relative of a shark and they have something different inside their bodies that separates them from all these other fish that you see in here because these other fish what we think of as a fish they have bones whereas sharks and stingrays don't have bones they have cartilage like we got in our ears that make them all floppy or our nose you'll notice it feels a little bit different uh, than like your elbow you touch your elbow that's pretty hard that's made out of bone so sharks and rays are different from all these other fish because they don't have bones in their body. Their skeletons are made completely of cartilage like we have in our nose and our ears. Okay, now there's also another question is, do sharks attack people? And yes, I will say there have been cases where sharks have attacked people. Is it a common thing? No, but there also have been cases where usually it's a stake, um, either a case of someone who's got some food, they're doing some spear fishing or something. And so the, attract is, the shark is attracted over to the water um, by that, that they're smelling in the water. Um, and then they just get confused. Uh, there also are cases of people kind of picking on sharks and then they kind of, you know, they're playing around with the sharks a little bit. Just let the animals be. When they're in their own ocean habitat, just let them be. But for the most part, sharks like to keep their distance from people. Um, we are actually more likely to be injured um, and lots of different things that we do every day. Um, even, believe it or not, sitting on the toilet, the bathroom, uh, more people get injured there, or a vending machine falling on them, um, or being attacked by a pig, things like that. Uh, so lots of different things that are more dangerous to people uh, than sharks. Uh, but let's see, um, Eliana says, how do sharks lose their teeth? Well, because they're not anchored in bone, like our teeth are, um, it does come out really easily from that cartilage. So as they're eating something and they've got this kind of loose tooth that's stuck on some food, as they are shaking their head or getting that bite out, that tooth can just fall right out pretty easily. But again, it's not a big problem for a shark because they can just keep regrowing those teeth and getting them to replace themselves. So not a bad deal for a shark. How many types of sharks are there? There are actually over 400 different species of sharks. Uh, so there are a lot of sharks out there. And keep in mind, half of them never get bigger than you. Never get bigger than three and a half feet. Okay, we are going to wrap things up here. Oh, we will still continue to answer any questions that you have already texted us. Uh, so we will still get those answers to you. They just won't be online because we need to give our computers a break. Oh, and if you have more questions as you go, you can ask them via our social media. So we are here for you. And so use us as a resource um, during this time that you're at home and uh, you can tune into our webcams, watch our sharks swimming around here at any time um, and see some of our animals in our other exhibits too. But thank you again for joining us today. We really appreciate you. And um, thanks for all your questions. Hopefully you feel like you learned a little bit more about sharks today. Bye everyone, have a great day.